It is Wednesday evening, the 12th of June, the year of our Lord, 2024. And it's time for our evening devotions. Thank you for joining us. And we hope above everything else that you find what you come seeking this evening. Uh, The sun has set. uh, Night is closing in. And we are going to be praying to the Lord Uh, and worshiping him uh, in the stillness of the evening. So welcome. We're going to move on to our first song, and then we'll be back with our prayer. this evening, uh, since Sunday is Father's Day and we're not going to be having a a, a sanctuary worship on Father's Day, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to share with you a Father's Day prayer. Uh, This is written by the Reverend Dr. Libby Gramer. And uh, I just thought uh, it was a really nice prayer that I would share and it's appropriate for the week since we celebrate our fathers this weekend. So if you would, bow your heads with me and let's pray. We give thanks today for fathers who showed up, Lord, and played and danced and ran and twirled, taught and learned. For fathers who kissed boo-boos and held us in strong arms when we were weak. For fathers who believed in us and trusted us with our own futures, even as they taught us how best to live. For fathers who exhibited the very best of what it means to be men. 
and tossed aside toxic masculinity in favor of a strength in love and empathy. For fathers who had high standards yet deep compassion. For fathers who taught us rules to live by with integrity, live by these rules themselves. Our fathers who protected us and sought our welfare. For fathers who were never related to us by blood or by law, but stood in as a father figure. For fathers who were not always present, but by grace have come back into our lives. We are grateful, Lord, and we thank you for those men who have their legal blood fathers, uh, for those who have stepped in when, when for some reason our, our biological father was unable, or our legal father. And uh, we just thank you for fathers today, Lord. We pray for the sick. We pray for the those who are facing trials in their lives of other sorts. We uh, lift up those who are lonely this Father's Day, who don't have the benefit of children to visit them or grandchildren or who will be spending this day alone and uh, this coming Sunday. And we just uh, pray that they will find love and acceptance from you and uh, that they will take comfort in the fact that you are with them. And Lord, we pray all of this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going right on into our scripture, and then we'll be back with our message. So stay tuned. Our scripture for this morning is from the gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 14 to 28. One day Jesus cast out a demon from a man who couldn't speak. And when the demon was gone, the man began to speak. Crowds were amazed, but some of them said, No wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Others, trying to test Jesus, demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. He knew their thoughts, so he said, Any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A family splintered by feuding will fall apart. You say I am, powered, I am empowered by Satan, but if Satan is divided and fighting against himself, how can his kingdom survive? And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cut out demons too, so they will condemn you for what you have said. But I, if I am casting out demons by the power of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. Until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons and carries off his belongings. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert searching for rest. But when it finds none, it says, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds that its former home is all swept and in order. 
Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. So that that person is worse off than before. As he was speaking, a woman in the crowd called out, God bless your mother, the womb from which you came, and the breast that nursed you. Jesus said, But even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. These are the very words of God for the people of God. And your response is, thanks be to God. Well, Jesus was driving out demons, and the Pharisees saw that, and again saw Jesus as a huge threat to their power and influence. And so they set out to try and discredit him yet again. And uh, that's what we read in this section of Luke 11. And uh, in fact, this section is entitled, Jesus Answers Hostile Accusations. Uh, A similar and possibly separate event is reported in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 to 45, and in Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to 30. The event described by Luke happened in Judea, while the other two took place, or the other one took place in Galilee. According to Luke, Jesus spoke to the crowds, and in Matthew and Mark, he accused the Pharisees. Some of the Pharisees' followers were exorcists. That is, they drove out demons, just like Jesus was doing. The Pharisees' accusations were becoming more desperate. To accuse Jesus of being empowered by Satan, the prince of demons, because Jesus was driving out demons, was also to say that the Pharisees' own exorcists were doing Satan's work. Jesus turned the religious leaders' accusations against them, as he often did. I'm sure that was frustrating for them. You can't get ahead of God. So, and, and Jesus being uh, one arm of the triune God, uh, you know, they 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 didn't obviously understand who he was, or they wouldn't even have tried it. Jesus first dismissed their absurd claim. Uh, Then he engaged in a little irony. He said, what about your own exorcists? Finally, he concluded that his work of driving out demons proved that the kingdom of God had arrived. Satan, who had controlled the kingdom of his world for thousands of years, was not being controlled and overpowered by Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' kingdom began to come into power at Jesus' birth and grew as he resisted the wilderness temptations. That was kind of the beginning of it. It established itself through the teachings and healings. It blossomed in victory at his resurrection and at Pentecost, and it will become permanent and universal at his second coming. We know, and Satan knows, that his time here is limited, and so he's going to wreak as much havoc as he can before the uh, the inevitable happens and Jesus comes back and Satan will be banished forever to the dark world. Um, In verses 21 and 22, let me refresh your memory on that. It says, when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons and carries off his belongings. Jesus may have been referring to a passage from Isaiah 49, verses 24 to 26. Regardless of how great Satan's power is, Jesus is stronger still. He will overpower Satan and dispose of him for eternity. You can find that assurance in Revelation 20, 
verses 2 and again in verse 10 of Revelations 20. How does this verse uh, relate to uh, nine, verse 9, uh, 50? Anyone who is not against you is for you. In the earlier passage, in chapter 9, Jesus was talking about a person who was driving out demons in Jesus' name. Um, you can go back to chapter 9 of Luke and uh, verse 50 and read that. Um, those who fight evil, he was saying, are on the same side as the one who was driving out demons in Jesus' name. So people who fight evil are on Jesus' side. Here, by contrast, he was talking about the conflict between God and the devil. In this battle, if a person is not on God's side, he or she is on Satan's side. It's pretty simple. You're either with God or you're against God. There's no neutral ground in this. Because God has already won the battle, why be on the losing side? If you aren't actively for Christ, you're against him. Once again, you're either for me or against me is what God is saying and Jesus is saying. So, in, I guess to close this thought, this, this little uh, uh, message this evening, uh, the question is to you is, and to me, is whose side do we want to be on? I think you know the answer, and so do I. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for being with us, and that as we choose your side, we know that your mighty power is at our disposal at every turn. And we just thank you for that wonderful reassurance, Lord. We pray that throughout our lives, we strive every day to move closer to you. Help us with that, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to move into our final song, and then we'll be back for our benediction and blessing. So sing along.
gold and the harbor bright. Will you anchor safe by the heavenly shore when the storms are past forevermore? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Well, we hope that you found this evening's devotion helpful. At the beginning, we said that our hope for you, as always, is that you find what you come seeking. I hope you've done that today. And uh, we pray that as you leave, you'll accept this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Remember, we love you and God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Until next time, good night and God bless. Mm -hmm.